Isaiah 65, verses 1 through 10. I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, Here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good according to their own thoughts, a people who provoke me to anger continually to my face, who sacrifice in gardens and burn incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend the night in the tombs, who eat swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things is in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am holier than you. These are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will repay, even repay into their bosom, your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, says the Lord, who have burned incense on the mountains and blasphemed me on the hills. Therefore I will measure their former work into their bosom. Thus says the Lord, As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, Do not destroy it, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob, and from Judah an heir of my mountains. My elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Achor a place for herds to lie down for my people who have sought me. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 through 10. God is amazing, it's clear. And this is something that's fascinating. As, as we've heard Janice read, see, God speaks clearly about the way that He will handle each culture at the end of time. God is going to deal with all of us. The Lord will reconcile everything that that culture has rejected from him to himself at the end. Now, Revelation chapter 19 shows us the details of that. If you want to read it, we'll get to it later. But Isaiah 65 reminds and explains how God addresses us today. Now, here's what he says, quote, I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. That's Isaiah 65, verse 1. The Lord speaks of a time when Israel denies him and does not see his work or his power. And there are many who say that God should just show himself on, on CNN or Fox News. Uh, better yet, perhaps YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or something. What if God has already shown himself many times and we've chosen, we, not to listen to him? Today, be sure to hear and listen to the Lord as he continues to speak to us when we truly seek his face. And that's what we're going to talk about. You see, beloved, as we think this through, as we begin to understand, we say, why doesn't God just show himself somewhere? He's given his only son who came in the center of time, you drive around, you, you walk around and you see crosses and you see all of these effects. I mean, the way we celebrate Christmas, the birth of Christ, and the way we celebrate Easter, all of the, God, God has shown himself to us so much and we choose not to listen. We need to think that through. We need to understand what God is saying right now today, because I don't think we're listening. I don't think people are truly understanding that God is talking. And we're talking about that today. God's showing himself from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 through 10. And as we do that, take your Bible guide and turn to today's page. And if you don't have a Bible guide, why not? You can write to us and get one. Uh, or you can actually just go online at www.biblediscoverytv.com and uh, do me a favor and pray about what God would have you do and give a gift in any amount, and we'll send you the, the Bible guide. Pray about it first. But it's important that we hear what God is saying. Father, I pray today 
in the name of Jesus Christ, that we would understand this, that we would get it, that the Holy Spirit inside of our hearts would teach us and would show us what you're doing and how you're doing it. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that as we hear your scripture, it would, it would literally go in and we would get it today in Jesus' name, amen. It's important for us to read the Bible for the Bible to change us, not for us to change the Bible or us to get reinforcement from the Bible. We need to read the Bible so the Bible can change our heart. And as we do, things happen, good things. God speaks to us. For example, in Isaiah 65, one through two, here's what it says. Quote, I was sought by those who did not ask for me, God says. I was sought by those who did not ask for me. God continues, I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good according to their own thoughts. Isn't that something? You see, here's what I'm trying to say. We look at this scripture and we see that we have our own thoughts about God. But he is our creator. God is our creator. That's what Genesis says. The Lord rarely conforms to our ideas. We should be willing to listen to his goodness. And as we listen to the goodness of God and the greatness of his ideas, then we begin to understand who he is. And that's important because a lot of us think we know God. We really don't. We don't know God. But when we begin to understand the word, we read his word and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us, suddenly he shows us things we never thought we knew. That's incredible. Look at this. Isaiah 65 verse 3 says, A people who provoked me to anger continually to my face. He's talking about somebody here that's interesting. Who sacrificed in gardens and burned incense on the altars of brick, which he did not command them to do. Who sit among the graves and spend the night in the tombs. Who eat swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things in their vessels. Who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me for I am holier than you. These are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. What in the world are we to think of this? God is incensed when we are full of religious pride. People oftentimes have ideas of God and they're going to do this or that or to please God. But let me tell you something. Isaiah 58 tells us what God is pleased with. When we turn away the pointing of the finger, and we consider those who are hungry. We take them in in the name of Jesus Christ. We offer water, food, and we clothe the naked. We help the people who are sick. Those who are in prison, we go to them. This is the kind of thing that God says, that's what I'm interested in. But my people all day long, they're doing religious things. I did not ask them to do religious things, but they themselves think they're pleasing me by these religious things. So how many of us do religious things trying to please God? That's a good question, isn't it? I have to ask myself that question as well, because God is asking us this question here. And as we consider that, we need to think through what God is saying. And so, beloved, when we come to this, we understand it. We say in verse 6, behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silence, but I will repay, even repay into their bosom. Oh, my goodness. This is something. Your iniquities, and the word iniquities means pattern of sin. Your iniquities and the iniquities, the pattern of sin of your fathers, together, says the Lord, who have burned incense on the mountains and blasphemed me on the hills. Therefore, I will measure their former work into their bosom. Wow. Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster and one says, do not destroy it, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, an heir of the mountains, 
My elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. Sharon shall be a fold of flocks in the valley of Achor, a place of herds to lie down for my people who have sought me. Man, that's amazing, beloved. We look at the third point, and this is shocking. God will select his people who have sought him, his people who've sought him and his covenant. And in the end, it is not hereditary that makes God's chosen, but it is those who are faithful, those who make decisions to follow Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of people that's going to be in heaven that we do not expect there because they love the Lord. And they didn't do the religious things that we do, but they served God. You see, beloved, that's what we need to remember. We need to hear when the Lord tells us what he's saying. We need to hear it and do it and listen to it because God speaks to us. And this religious idea, these religious things that are all around us are interesting, but they're not necessarily pleasing to God. What pleases God is when we reach out and help people. What pleases God is when we give a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus Christ. Not that we have all our theological questions answered, but we have this question answered. Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords, the Son of God. And through Jesus Christ, because he reached out and he told people, come to me, all you are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He did that. We do that. When we do that, we learn what pleases the Lord. God is not interested in making people do religious things, but he's interested in helping people come to know him. Relationship. That's what God speaks of. Relationship with God. Not religious things, but relationship, beloved. We need to focus on that and we need to hear that because the Lord is talking to us today. So we pray, Lord, help me to be the person that you desire me. You desire me to be. Help me not to become proud in my religious things. Mm -hmm.